We're continuing our studies in Chapter 22 on Protein Synthesis, and in this lesson we're concerned with the termination of translation, as well as the coupling of transcription and translation in prokaryotic systems. Important in the process of termination are certain release factors, and we'll look at that process in just a moment. Here we're looking at a ribbon diagram of release factor 1, which is responsible for recognizing the stop codon. Remember, there are three possible stop codons, none of which specify an amino acid. In other words, there's no tRNA that will recognize and bind to those stop codons. Instead, one of the release factors, either release factor 1 or release factor 2, will bind to that stop codon. How does it recognize that it's a stop codon? Look at the bottom of the screen here. You'll see what's referred to as the anticodon loop highlighted in orange. Anticodon is in quotes because this isn't a nucleotide. Remember, this is a protein, so this is a sequence of three amino acids that will interact with the three bases in the stop codon and confirm that it is a stop codon. So it is, in a sense, an anticodon loop, even though it's a sequence of amino acids rather than nucleotides. And so this is how the release factor recognizes that it is a stop codon. Its function is to release the polypeptide chain. Remember, it's still bound to that tRNA molecule. For that purpose, it has a p-site loop highlighted here in brown. It's called a p-site loop because it projects into the p-site of the large subunit. It has a conserved sequence, glycine, glycine, glutamine, and it's the amide group of the glutamine that promotes transfer of the peptidyl group to water. In other words, it hydrolyzes the peptide and releases it from the tRNA molecule. Let's see how this process works as illustrated in the figure on this slide. Transpeptidation and translocation have occurred, so now we have our complete polypeptide chain attached to the 3' prime end of the tRNA in the P site, and the stop codon of the mRNA is positioned in the A site. Now one of the prokaryotic release factors binds, RF1 or RF2, and recognizes that stop codon. It then causes the ribosome to transfer the peptidyl group to water, thereby releasing the polypeptide chain. Now we have the deacylated tRNA in the P site and the release factor in the A site. Binding of RF1 or RF2 is promoted by another release factor, RF3, bound to GTP. GTP hydrolysis allows all of the release factors to dissociate. To prepare for another round of translation, ribosome release factor, or RRF, slips into the A site. Binding of EFG in complex with GTP translocates ribosome release factor to the P site, thereby displacing the deacylated tRNA. Following GTP hydrolysis, EFG and RRF are released and the entire complex dissociates. IF3 binding to the newly released small ribosomal subunit ensures premature binding of the large 50S subunit. Now the released subunits can reassociate on a new message to form the initiation complex and begin translating that message. There is a coupling of transcription and translation that occurs in prokaryotic systems that is not possible in eukaryotes. Remember, prokaryotes lack a nucleus, and so both of these processes occur in the cytoplasm. Transcription creates mRNA, and multiple mRNAs can be made from a single gene. And as soon as the ribosome binding site is available on the message, a ribosome can bind even while the message is still being made. And once a ribosome has cleared that ribosome binding site, a second ribosome can bind. This is the advantage of not having a nucleus. You can make multiple proteins rapidly from each message. 
In our figure here we have our double-stranded DNA. RNA polymerase has bound and is transcribing that into a message and that's our blue ribbon here. Here's the 5' prime end. At the 5' prime end is our ribosome binding site. A ribosome has bound and begun to translate that message. And here a second ribosome has bound. The one that has proceeded the furthest has the longer nascent protein chain. At the bottom of the screen we have an electron micrograph of this. Here's our 5' prime end of the mRNA here and at the top our 3' prime end. And you can see polysomes or multiple ribosomes present and the ones that have nearly completed the message, translating the message, have the longer polypeptide chains. In our next video lesson, we want to consider various molecular chaperones and the roles they play in helping to initiate and maintain proper folding of proteins within the cell.